Hi, I'm Joel Bennett, and I'm here with Lexington Times editor Paul Oliva, and we're going to cover some football this evening, in this edition, rather, and uh, Paul, thanks for having me. Hey, JB, thanks for so much for being here. Uh, so you've been a professional sports broadcaster for over 30 years. Can you tell me about how you got into the business? Sure, be glad to. Thanks for having me again. And this all began back in 1989. I was at Campbellsville College then, now university. And I started covering the football team with my father-in-law, Mr. Russ Mobley. And uh, at that time in 88, Campbellsville uh, was resurrecting a football program. They were not playing a varsity schedule. It was a non-competitive uh, rostered kind of like practice schedule in 88. So 89 was the first year we did it. So for the next 10 years, I saw every game that Campbellsville uh, played in football. I saw some really uh, good highlights. Uh, head football coach Ron Finley. He's a Hall of Fame coach. They've named the field after him and all. Uh, he, uh, he was uh, really uh, instrumental in uh, coaching Campbellsville. And I got my start, I say, at Campbellsville. And a little background about myself. Uh, born in Cincinnati, grew up down in Wayne County's Monticello, Kentucky. Uh, high school uh, and college athlete, both at Wayne County and at Campbellsville College, wow. now university. So uh, that's that's where my background comes in. Then I got into broadcasting, as I say, when I was at Campbellsville. After I was uh, an athlete there, I took to the radio uh, and uh, saw some really good football with Coach Finley. Actually, in basketball, too, uh, Lou Cunningham, who coached me, I covered his basketball games at Campbellsville University. And a name that a lot of uh, Lexington people know, and across the state of Kentucky, for that matter, Travis Ford. I was his hmm. first radio broadcaster uh, for the men's basketball. So during all this time, I've covered boys and girls, uh, high school basketball, men's and women's college basketball, football, baseball, uh, fast pitch softball, baseball at the college level and high school, even did a, a state tournament volleyball match. Hmm. So I've covered a lot of sports. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's impressive. So would you say, um, in your opinion, does your experience give you a, a unique insight into high school sports? I think it does. I've uh, the, the college game required so much travel, and, and I started having a family, so I shifted gears a little bit more toward high school, but mm -hmm. I think it gives a unique perspective. And the thing about the high school game is uh, fans are passionate, coaches are competitive, officials are committed. And I've met some really wonderful people uh, in doing all this. And, and if I could go back to my Campbellsville uh, College uh, times of broadcasting, I, I think it, uh, it'll it dovetail well into what I want to get out as far as the college game. Then we'll shift to the high school preview. I mentioned that, that I started with Campbellsville whenever they just resurrected football. Head coach Ron Finley, uh, a big barrel-chested guy, very verbose uh, uh, country with a capital K. He loved these boys. Uh, his uh, boys, but uh, I watched uh, football at that time. It go from a non-varsity, non-competing to in 1994, they shared a Mid-South Conference title in mm -hmm. just five years. In 97, they won the Mid-South Conference title. Uh, they were the only Mid-South Conference football team to defeat Georgetown College. At the time, Georgetown College was uh, ruling. They were dominant. Campbellsville beat them three times in the decade that. of the 90s. Yeah, and you know, they were not just winning the MSC Mid-South Conference, they were NAI National College football champs. So multiple consecutive years, right? You are exactly right. They had three seasons in which they were the national title holder. That was in 1999, 2000, and 2001. Uh, an interesting footnote, when Campbellsville won the first time ever, and they defeated Georgetown three times, which uh, first time, and Paul, I, I'll uh, – I'll try to be quick about it, but I think people may find this entertaining. I did. You got to know Coach Finley, like I said, a big barrel-chested, uh, loud, verbose guy. He was old uh, as some of the guys' uh, player grandpa could be. But uh, we were at Jeff's Food Mart in Campbellsville, and they brought down a, uh, a Louisville uh, Courier-Journal reporter, if I might uh, throw that pitch out there. Anyway, he came down to Jeff's Food Mart. It's a hangout in Campbellsville where everybody goes to talk sports. You're going to have county attorneys there. You're going to have hmm. uh, physicians. You're going to have farmers, just an eclectic bunch there. Everybody's there eating chili and uh, 
and sandwiches with Jeff. And here comes a Louisville reporter, and he wants to interview Coach Finley. At the time, Paul, there was a debate about the new naming of uh, Georgetown's field. And naming rights okay. actually, believe it or not, extend beyond uh, today's NFL stuff. So Georgetown at the time and Campbellsville, both are Southern Baptist colleges are affiliated with the Southern Baptist uh, Convention. And there was uh, evidently a very successful Georgetown College alum that had made some money in the food industry and the restaurant business with Hooters and possibly even with Applebee's. And uh, would they name the field Hooters? So <laughs> that was kind of a pitch. They ended up with Applebee's. The Louisville reporter comes down and says, Coach Finley, you've got this big game coming up with uh, Georgetown College. How do you feel about playing on the new, Hooter, or new Applebee's field? Coach Ron Finley in Finley fashion looked around. He said, I'll tell you what, we're here to play football. That's what we're going to do. We're going to line up and play football. I don't care where we play them. We can play them out here in this parking lot, or we can play them on the wing of the 747. We're going to play football. So we all got a kick out of that. You know, how are you going to play football on the wing of a 747? But that's the way Coach Finley was. So we had a great time with that. That field eventually became the Cincinnati Bengals uh, preseason training camp. Uh, before, well, they left Wilmington, Ohio to come down to Georgetown. So uh, that was an interesting storyline. And by the way, before I get into high school, the Georgetown College, I said I would dovetail it with that. They have an interesting uh, situation. They have hired Chris Oliver as their new head coach at Georgetown College. He'll coach the Tigers. Chris Oliver, last year, he won a national title, NAIA Division I National Football Championship with Lindsey Wilson College in Columbia, Kentucky. So hmm. Coach Oliver leaves Lindsey uh, as a national champion head coach. He's going to Georgetown. This will be his first year there. And Paul, it should make for a very exciting uh, uh, football matchup when Lindsey and Georgetown play. Oh, well, wow, JB. That was very informational and historical. Uh, let's go into uh, high school sports now. Uh, what are the local teams looking like this season? Yes, uh, the thing about high school football, I think it's in, in great shape. Uh, we, you know, a lot of offerings for high school students now. You're going to have uh, competing athletics in season, whether it be soccer, golf, or whatever, and there's just a lot of offerings out there for students. So much specialization that football needs to try to garner the interest. And I think we've learned all that uh, – uh, through NFL all the way down, safety is a big thing. We've got uh, we've got protocols now in place uh, for everything at all levels, NFL down, whether it be uh, concussion protocols. It's very standard for all players, all teams, heat index and all. So I think football has had to try to adjust revisions of equipment, mm -hmm. revisions of rules. So the high school game is catching on as – all levels of football have. Right. So with that in mind, the thing about Kentucky high school football and people uh, tuning in, they may know about this, <clears throat> but football is a classification sport in Kentucky. It's classified into six classes, 1A being the lowest pupil population in that school all the way to 6A. Now there were some, just a few fewer teams aligned with the KHSAA, the Kentucky High School Athletic Association, this year. But so when I'm talking about football, if I refer to single A to 6A, just to give you some context, if I say a top 10 team in 6A, 4A, 5A, whatever, here's how many schools are there. 6A, there's 33. 5A, there's 37. 4A, there's 35 schools. 3A, 38. 2A, 33. And then Class A, single A, 39. So there's 218 overall schools in the state of Kentucky that align with the KHSAA. And what about there? Are there any schools that don't align with KHSAA? Yes, there may be some schools that, uh, and you're looking at mostly the class A. That's a good question, Paul, because they may not have the numbers to field and put a team out there mm -hmm. or either the interest waned and they could not uh, come up with a team. So yeah, there, there are some schools that may play, Basketball, mm -hmm. where the roster is 15 at the most, uh, but football where you need at least at a minimum 25 or so, maybe they can't garner the interest of that many uh, students. So, yeah, it's it's a little different in that. And uh, 
when I look at uh, high school football, and again, there's some good publications out there. I want to start off with uh, giving thumbs up and some really good props to, we've got a couple of uh, published reporters that do a great job covering high school football. That's uh, Jason Frakes and Jared Peck. And these guys have published reports out there that uh, broadcasters, radio broadcasters like myself, it's so, it's so phenomenal, this platform of podcasting, even the internet and access to statistics, uh, watching in-game live video, it, everything is just really transformed in, in sports. So, but uh, with all that said, Jared Frakes and Jared Peck, uh, Jason Frakes rather and Jared Peck, they do a solid job covering high school sports. When you look at Class A football, again, some of the smallest schools, and uh, you're going to hear some names that were uh, traditional powers. When I look at last year's state champions, Paul, last year in the Kentucky High School uh, football gridiron playoff classics, played right here in Lexington at Kroger Field. It was some of the best football played, and I don't know when. Of the six championship games, Five of them were decided by one score. Wow. So it was very competitive. It was only the uh, um, win Boyle County 30 to 13 over Johnson Central that even had that much of a margin. But every game was competitive. Last year, you had a Class A champion was Pikeville. 2A was Beachwood. 3A was Belfry. 4A, Boyle County. 5A, South Warren over in Bowling Green and then St. Xavier out of Louisville 6A. So when I look, I'm just going to talk, and I'm going to run through these quickly, listen for your team, uh, but to give you an idea of these preseason rankings, you have Max Preps, which is a highly respected uh, uh, source that you can sign on with. And again, as I mentioned, Brakes and Pecks do a good job covering. Class A football, uh, Pikeville pretty much hands down, looks to repeat again. They're ranked number one. Country Day on Louisville, two. Raceland, three. That's up in eastern Kentucky. Up in the Ashland area, uh, Russellville at number four. Bethlehem out of Bardstown, five. Newport Central Catholic. Bishop Rossert, northern Kentucky team. Williamsburg. Then you've got number nine, Hazard, who is always there. And a good thing for Sayre. Lexington Sayre, they've had a football team for five years. They've got a lot of guys out now. Their head coach, he's a former NFL star, Chad Pennington, uh, with the Jets and the Dolphins. Wait, he's, Sayer has Chad Pennington as their coach? He's their head coach. What? And, yeah, and his son just uh, was a starter, uh, well, since they started football back. He is now at Marshall. He got a scholarship at Marshall. And now the quarterback. did Chad Pennington play at Marshall? He did. You're oh. exactly right. So the, mm -hmm. the lineage continues. And also the uh, younger Pennington is now the quarterback for Sayre. Wow. So, uh, yeah, appreciate, uh, you know, thumbs up to Sayre. Five years they've had a program. They're getting the numbers out. Class 2A, here's where Lexington rules. You got Lexington Christian that's up there at number one in the preseason ranking. Really? Lexington team on top. They really, uh, uh, they've. They were there the last, uh, you know, they've been at the tops uh, for the state championship, uh, had a tough game against Somerset a couple of years back, but they have an infused player now called uh, Cutter Bowley that comes up from LaRue County, six foot five, 200 pound kind of guy, big arm. He's a sophomore. Uh, he's going to be instilled, uh, instilled there at the quarterback. Mm -hmm. It's going to allow him to move last year's quarterback over to wide receiver. And he was a dynamite player. Uh, Nieves is his name. And so Lexington Christian, number one, Beachwood, always there. <clears throat> They're at number two, Middlesboro, three. They've got a resurgence, Mayfield, four, West Carter, five. Uh, Murray checks in at six, Caldwell County. There's some Western Kentucky teams. Green County. Tell me about them. Green County, they're coming back. They had an eight and one season last year after not having a winning season for about six or seven years. I covered the Dragons for years. I watched them beat teams back in the heyday when Jody Demling, a beat writer out in the Courier Journal called Class 2A Power Green County, comes to Louisville to take on Holy Cross. The Dragons have beaten in the past, not once, but more than once, Danville, Glasgow, Middlesbrough, mm. Somerset, Holy Cross. They beat Corbin in the best high school football game I've ever broadcast. So Green County's got a resurgence. They've got a new coach there, and for a school that's got three to 400 students, they cracked the top 10, Danville at nine, Owensboro Catholic in at number 10. Looking at Class 3A, Christian Academy out of Louisville, number one, Bardstown, number two, 
Glasgow, Union County, Mercer County, Bell County round out the next. Belfry, last year's champion. They're at seven. Lawrence County at number eight. <clears throat> Ashland Blazer, East Carter, and another team that I covered in 1999 that won a regional championship, the only in the school's history, Taylor County. They check in at number 10. Looking at Class 4A high school football, the preseason rankings have Corbin, the Red Hounds, very solid team, very, very strong year in, year out. Again, Boyle County, there's some debate there. If you look at other pollings, they're going to have Boyle County as number one in the state overall, regardless of classes. So the Rebels of Boyle County, very strong football team, Johnson Central at three. Lexington Catholic, now this is a team – uh, the Lexington Catholic, they haven't been in the mix for the last four or five years as far as in the state tournament play. they got a solid football team. Uh, they are looking to make a, a good push this year. They come in at number four. Franklin County, that team, uh, they have uh, Mr. Kentucky football front runner. He's already signed with football uh, with Kentucky football uh, as a running back. you got Louisville Central, Letcher County, Spencer County, Logan County, and Holmes. Class 5A, here's where Lexington rules again. You've got Frederick Douglass in at number one. Most of the polling will have overall Frederick Douglass in the top three. They're going to have Bull County up there, Lexington Christian, and also Frederick Douglass. you got to look at this Frederick Douglass team. I mean, they were just a snap away from winning it. They have been a pipeline feed for UK football. The Wildcats know they've got something close to home here that is a good recruiting base. It's a good feeder for the Wildcat football team. They're ranked number one in 5A, and quite frankly, Paul, mm -hmm. uh, of the top 10 players in the state, two of them are on Frederick Douglass' team. If you go to the top 50, they've got six of the top 50 players in the state on Frederick Douglass. Who's their coach, and how long has he been coaching? Well, I'm going to have to get to that a little later. And uh, uh, the coach over there, he is looking to make another run with it. The uh, Frederick Douglass team, again, they're ranked number one, 5A poll, and uh, Coach Nathan McPeak, he's the Broncos head coach, and he's wanting to make a run with it. The thing is with Frederick Douglass, if you can imagine this, you're a football fan, you're a former football player, all four of their defensive secondary, secondary have D1 offers or signees on the table. I would not want to be a quarterback facing off against the Broncos this season. They are very, very solid. So. They come in ranked number one in 5A. You got South Warren, last year's champion, number two, Owensboro, who uh, lost their quarterback uh, last year, a Mr. Kentucky football front runner, signed with Rutgers. Uh, his name was Wentz and Gavin Wentz. He uh, was there last year, but they're number three ranked this year, Woodford County. So look for Woodford County. They're number four, Southwestern, out of Pulaski County, five. Then the uh, bottom five of the top 10, Covington Catholic, Graves County. Cooper High, Collins High, and Scott County. Going to the largest schools, uh, 33 of the largest schools in Kentucky. You're looking at pupil population of uh, 1,200 to 15, 1,600 in this. Male high school gets all the first place votes as number one in 6A high school football this year. Mm -hmm. St. X out of Louisville, last year's champ number two. Manuel, another Louisville team at number three. Bryan Station. And uh, Brian Station, the uh, uh, that team, they are very, very good. They're very solid. Look for them to make some noise. As I mentioned, they uh, they are ranked here uh, number four in the state overall. They play in a district against Madison Central, who's ranked number nine, against Oldham County. That's right. They go all the way up to LaGrange uh, to play. Oldham County, who gets votes, and also George Rogers Clark. So Brian Station, they have restored the uh, history there. They have invested in uh, uh, weight room, uh, uh, field upgrades, and the players are really, really pumped. Uh, Trinity comes in, Louisville Trinity at number five, Davis County six, Ryle High School, Ballard at eight, Madison Central I mentioned at number nine, Bullet East at number 10. And again, this is a max prep polling. Uh, there are multiple sources out there that will get you ready for high school football. I really have seen the game grow. As I mentioned, uh, you know, I'm not here to talk about football state, basketball state. We've had enough of that. But I can tell you this, that there was a day where the UK, uh, where the Kentucky High School All-Stars never defeated Tennessee All-Stars. Now, they not only compete, they win. So high school football in Kentucky has really come on. Uh, just run over the top five rankings, regardless of classes. I'll do the top ten. 
because the top 10 includes uh, some Lexington teams. Boyle County, number one. Again, this is Max Preps. Boyle County, number one. Frederick Douglass, number two overall in the state. Wow. St. X, Trinity, Mail. So Frederick five. Douglass, a Lexington team, is above St. X and Trinity and Mail, is you're, what you're telling me. You're looking at a team that's going to bring 12 starters back at Frederick Douglass. And again, that's secondary. All four of those guys have D1 uh, scholarships on the table, or they've already signed. Uh, they've got a wide receiver core that has put uh, uh, Dane Key and, and other guys, uh, they're ready to crowd us, they're ready to play uh, at the next level. So it's really been uh, the, what the Broncos have done a uh, relatively short amount of times, uh, really uh, hats off. It's amazing. Lexington Christian, the Eagles in there at number six, South Warren and Bowling Green, seven, Woodford County, just over in nearby Versailles at number eight, Owensboro, nine. And then Brian Station getting a lot of respect wow. as uh, Max Preps puts in number 10 in the state overall. So JB, I, state rankings. I just want to point out, back when I played, if you had told me we would have Lexington, Christian, Woodford County, and Brian Station in the state top 10, I would have told you you were crazy. But it seems like the times have changed and shifted. Yeah, it's uh, – again, it's not a football-basketball debate, but – I'm sitting here saying that uh, the level of high school football, you're seeing uh, a lot of teams and a lot of athletes, especially, Paul, like you mentioned, right here in central Kentucky, they have a Division I uh, quality level of play. And, I mean, that says a lot about the coaches, says a lot about the players and the schools and the communities' investment in the players. Even the teams that weren't mentioned on there, Paul, I'll just briefly touch on, like Paul Lawrence Dunbar, they had a seven and six record last year, but again, they won their district. Uh, so, and that's nothing to slouch at. You know, they yeah. got 12 starters back, seven on offense. They got their quarterback coming back. Uh, you know, some other teams that have just touched briefly on Lexington Catholic. You know, they haven't made a deep playoff run since 2015, but now they are getting attention statewide notoriety. Sayer High School, it's only been five years for football, but my goodness. Uh, what leaps they've made in a short amount of time. Takes Creek, team I know that you're close to. They went three and nine last year. The thing about it is they're in the district with uh, some tough tough teams. Uh, they went two and three in their district. Actually, they brought a coach back, Jonathan Hawks. He's been with their track and field program on and off with football. He's back. He said his main focus right now is to get the mentality right of his players. Uh, Lafayette High School, uh, they're coming back. Uh, kids, uh, you know, their coach went through the high school uh, hallways and found guys that wanted to play. So uh, you're you're getting uh, coaches looking for players to try to invest and recruit. Henry Clay, the uh, final school, I'll say here, second uh, year head coach, Demetrius Gay, said, uh, you know, we got a lot of games. We're just going to have to put uh, a full game together. We were close in a lot of games. We did finish. He's focusing on that. So that kind of gives you an overview of what's available uh, as far as a uh, preview of Kentucky high school football, a little bit statewide, but looking here locally at uh, in the Lexington area. And um, as I started off with, I've, done, I've broadcast for 33 years in the uh, college and high school ranks. And again, Gateway Radio Works, I throw uh, – a Plug in for them. I'm on 102.9 FM and AM 990. I'll be covering their uh, high school football games. Most teams kick off on Friday night. There'll be a lot of bowl games, uh, mm -hmm. opening season bowl games where uh, sponsors are looking to get some uh, advertisement and also some publicity. And it's a good time to see teams out of district go head to head. So you're going to see a lot of bowl games. There's going to be over 30 bowl games going on uh, uh, in Friday and Saturday in Kentucky high school football. So that's a lot of fun. I've had a great time working for Commonwealth Broadcasting, Work Broadcasting, Shoreline Communications, uh, Gateway Radio Works. It's all been a, it's all been a blast and I continue to enjoy it and I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, there's just so much information to, to share out here about players and teams, but um, for time's sake, we're not going to get into college uh, NIL agreements and transfer portals. Those could be episodes of their self. <laughs> it is good, though, that UK is coming up, Paul. UK, uh, much-anticipated season for the Wildcats. 
I was reading Monday, they were 20th in the AP poll, 21st in the coaches polls, right. uh, first preseason AP top 25 ranking in 40 years. Four players from last year's Citrus Bowl champ team were taken in the NFL draft. Other four, four other players signed free agent deals. So, mm. hey, Wildcat football, uh, really, really exciting. Everybody's anticipating and looking forward to this year. So go out and support your high school football team. It's a really good venue, and uh, it's for the kids. I, I believe you'll be entertained and you'll enjoy it. Well, uh one more thing before we uh, wrap up, JB, who's Tate's Creek playing on a Friday? Really uh, didn't bring that schedule with me, but uh, <laughs> I didn't bring a, 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 a KHSAA schedule with me on that. That's but, all right. We'll edit it in. Okay. <laughs> well, there'll, there'll, be a, there'll be a lot of, like I said, over 30 bowl games uh, this weekend on Friday and Saturday. So high school football is really, uh, it's here. It's that time, and we're ready to go. Well, if you're a sports fan, there's no excuse not to be out at one of them this Friday. That's right. Appreciate it, Paul. Thank you. Uh, let's move on.